service will go as follows. We will open up our service with devotion from our devotion team led by myself, Terry C. Washington, uh, Brother Mike Gardy, and our First Lady, Sister Gardy. Afterwards, we will have an offering by our very own Brother Mike Gardy, followed by an uh, altar prayer my, by myself, Terrence C. Washington. And we will afterwards have another selection by our very own First Lady, Sister Gardy. Afterwards, we will have the main attraction from none other, none other than our very own Pastor A.D. Gardy, right. the hardest working pastor on this side of the Mississippi. Let us be ready to receive the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm glad to be in service. I'm glad to be in service. I'm glad to be in service. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. No. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more
Genesis uh, chapter 12, and we're going to cover verses 1 through 9. Again, that's Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. And it goes, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. And I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moray at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were, the, were, were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills of East Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and I on the east, there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And Abram set out and continued toward Negev. I have read to you Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy and divine word. Oh. 
on your behalf It's already getting better It's already getting easier God's already moving on your behalf He did it for me Yes, he did it for me. God did it. He did it. Yes, God did it. He did it for me. Yes, he did it for me. Moving on your behalf. He did it for me. It's okay to point to yourself. He did it for me.
do his best, Lord, to, to, to work in our lives, Lord, to work his deceiving tricks in our lives, Lord. So we pray, Father God, that we get better at being using discernment, Lord, to, to, to spot Satan in his ways, Lord, and continue, Lord, to count on you, Lord, count on the Holy Spirit, God, to give us strength, Lord, to fight off Satan, fight off the, the urges that he throws in, in our way, Lord, to force us to give in to temptation, God. We pray, Father God, that you clear our minds, Lord. Clear our minds of any distractions, Lord, so that we can receive the word wholeheartedly, Lord, and walk out different people, Lord. And Lord, I just want to say a special thank you for bringing our very own Mother Carly back, Lord. Yes, bringing her back, Lord, in one thank piece, you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that she's healthy, Lord. And we know, Lord, you're going to continue to protect her, Lord. And we ask that you continue to protect her and continue to heal whatever it is that still needs to be healing on her, God. And we just thank you for her in general, Father God. And we just pray right now, Lord, for all these things in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 What God has for me, it is for me. Yeah. What God What God 
what God has for me. It is for me. Amen. And all the people said amen. 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 Blessed be the Lord our God who has given us the victory. Amen. Today and always. Yes, amen. 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 And so we praise God for his presence in this place this morning, allowing us to be here once and again. Amen. Thank amen. God once again for uh, the presence of Mother Garley Amen. with us today. Amen. 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 Let us turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. We heard it read in our hearing earlier. Amen. We won't read it again at this moment, but keep your Bibles open in your laps. Amen. Amen. And that we would refer back to the text as we would travel along the way. This morning, I want to share with you uh, this message. I want to remind us a uh, familiar text uh, dealing with a familiar character of scripture, personality, who is instrumental in our history uh, of new life in Christ Jesus, and that is none other than Abraham. And so I want to share with you a lesson learned uh, from him that uh, would help us as well. And so the message for this morning is learning to trust him even when we can't trace him. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's our message today. Uh, in school, before uh, we were able to write well, uh, in the very early days of kindergarten and preschool, we learned to trace well. We may not have known how to write out various letters, symbols, or pictures on our own. Uh, but they would give us a piece of translucent paper, see-through paper, if you will. Yeah. And we would be able to place that paper on top of uh, an image or a word and we would be able to trace the words or letters underneath. And as we would trace them, we would come out with something that looks good. Um, we would be able to form words by tracing. Uh, tracing makes the matter of learning how to write a little bit easier. Uh, when we are beginning down that road, trying to take our first steps. Uh, but having traced, uh, we don't always trace in our latter years. We don't continue to trace uh, as we elevate and as we move upwards along life's way. And so it is, my brothers and sisters, uh, there comes a place, a time, when God uh, would have us to trust him in spite of the fact that we can't trace him. Uh, and if we are to trust God, uh, it would cause for us to be able to let loose, to release that which is familiar to us, in order that we may be able to trust him a little more. And, and while we are very much familiar with Abraham's story, I would that we would afresh learn from him once again uh, this basic rudimentary lesson today, uh, that we've sometimes uh, got to walk away from that which is familiar if we are to get that which is on the horizon. Catch this if you will. Uh, because in the conversation that God has with Abraham, the thing that he says in that first verse is get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. All of those things symbolize and represents 
familiarity. Yes. yes, certainly our own country. Yes, is a place that we become familiar with over a period of time. We become familiar with the lanes, the highways, the roads, the bridges. We become familiar with our stumping ground, places where we are accustomed to hanging out. Uh, yes, uh, certainly we know where our friends uh, hang out and where we like to go for entertainment in life. Yes, uh, he says, get away from your country. He says, get away from your family. Because family, yes, represents a level of familiarity also. Yes, we grow up with our family members. Uh, yes, we share rooms with our family members, under the same roof with our family members. We know their habits, their likes and dislikes. Uh, yes, we know their favorite foods. Uh, yes, family is a familiar terra firma for us. But he says, I want you to get out from underneath the familiar because I want to take you higher. Yes, there is something, Abraham, that I want to do in your life. Uh, yes, but in order for me to do what I want to do with you and get what I want to get out of you, I need you to move from where you are to where you need to be. And I know Brothers and sisters, we love that which is familiar. Uh, we grow comfortable around people and places that we know well. Not necessarily just uh, because it exudes perfection. Uh, no, that's not always the reason why we love that which is familiar. Uh, it, it's not because uh, that which is familiar is always what's best for us. Uh, but we like familiarity because uh, we just know it. We become comfortable and complacent with what is familiar for us. We get on the job. We learn how to do it well. We learn how to do it fast and quickly. Uh, yes, uh, but if you start changing stuff up, Yes, I got to put more thought into it. I got to put more time into it. Uh, yes, sometimes I may even have to work through lunch in order to get it done. Yes, we grow comfortable with that which is familiar. Even when new processes are available, even when new technology is on the horizon, uh, we just like doing it the way we've always done it. Yes, uh, and so my brothers and sisters, um, familiarity sometimes breeds contempt. Yes, we feel like we are in control with that which we are familiar with. And yet God would speak to Abraham and tell him to leave that which is familiar for new territory. Strike out and move ahead. God snatches the see-through paper, the translucent paper away and he leaves Abraham with a blank sheet of paper and expects him to write on the blank sheet and to come up with something that's legible and intelligent out of his life, even though it's unfamiliar to him. In other words, what God is doing is he's forcing him to trust God even when he can't trace God. There's nothing underneath the paper to trace, and yet, God expects Abraham to continue to trust him. So he says, move on, move out, so that I can move you up. Sometimes children learning how to ride a bike for the first time had an extra set of wheels on the back. We call them training wheels. 
they would hold the bike up even when the child couldn't hold it up on his or her own. There comes a time when God will snatch the training wheels off of our bikes and he'll say, now it's time mm. that you really learn how to ride. You've been learning how to steer. You've been learning how to pedal. But now it's time that you really show up. Learn how to ride a bike. They may sometimes, that parent may sometimes hold the back seat for a minute or two just to give a level of comfort and stability. But at some point, they'll let go of the seat and allow that child to ride on their own. They may wobble a little, they may zigzag for a while, but eventually they get the hang of it and they begin to speed up and down the block on their own. Uh, yes, God is looking for us to get on our spiritual bicycles. God is looking for us, uh, yes, to move through life. Uh, yes, when we can't trace him, uh, he, still, he still expects us to trust him. Listen, not only does God ask Abraham to release that which is familiar so that he can trust him without tracing him. He then goes a step further and he asks him to go to an undisclosed location. God doesn't even tell him where it is that he's going. Uh, look, look in that verse, that first verse once again. He says, to a land that I will show you not even a place that he is willing to disclose yet. He says, I want you to go to a place that I will show you future tense. I haven't disclosed it just yet. Builders who are constructing a building, some project or another, a house or a factory, a warehouse uh, of some sorts, an apartment building, they would all rely on a set of drawings called blueprints. That blueprint would have the details, the specs, the dimensions uh, uh, of what it is that would go in uh, to that building. Every uh, square inch, every little detail uh, of where things go and how it is that they fit into the overall uh, picture or project. And my brothers and sisters, every contractor who would participate or play a role in building that building, that structure, would have to rely on that set of blueprints for uh, them to do what it is that they are supposed to do. Whether it be concrete finishers or whether it be electricians, plumbers, uh, if you would, if it would be framers or roofers, uh, uh, whatever the role would be that they would play in the project, they would be reliant upon a set of blueprints in order to get it done right. Here it is, God would tell Abraham, I want you to get up, leave that which is familiar, that which is traceable, and I want you to go to a place that I'm not going to tell you. I'll show you in the end, but in the meantime, I want you to just simply Trust me when you can't trace me. Go where I say, and you'll get there. And all that I have promised, I will provide. We had an old saying and adage that we use uh, in days gone by, and we continue to use it. Where God guides, God provides. Uh, he says, I want you to get up and go. Um, to an undisclosed location. Uh, 
the good thing about it when you were in kindergarten and all of that good stuff, uh, you were learning how to write for the first time, even as you would move up some of the latter grades. They would at least provide you with paper that had lines on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the younger you were, the more lines there were. They would have some solid lines going across, and then it would have in the center some dashed lines. Amen. And the dashed line would help you with the midpoint of where you wanted your letters to be formed. The top solid line and the bottom solid line would help you with the starting and end point of where you wanted the top of the letter and the bottom of the letter to begin and end. Yes, uh, they were to help you out. But God even removes that off the paper. God would give Abraham just a blank sheet and tell him to follow me. I mean, we planning road trips, and I used to enjoy, when my father was living, I, I would enjoy uh, getting on the highway with him, and we would take turns driving. We would drive cross country. Um, not, not as much now as then. <laughs> But uh, we would drive across the country, and as we would drive, we'd have a road map oftentimes driving across. And you can look at where you wanted to go, especially if you were deviating from your normal path of going from point A to point B, and you wanted to go a different route. Mm -hmm. And it would lay out everything that you needed to know if you wanted to go from here to Chicago. Uh, you can determine which freeways you would take, which off-ramps you would need to look out for, uh, which roads uh, that you would uh, go down and all of that would be available for you on one of those maps so that you can predetermine how it is that you're going to get to your destination. And here it is, God would even take the road map from him. He says, I want you to go to a place where I will show you. I'll be your road map. I'll be your guide. I'll be your GPS. I'll tell you when you all turn right. I'll tell you how many miles you all go straight ahead. I, I'll tell you when it's time for you to go left or get onto another highway or an interchange. I, I'll, I'll let you know, Abraham. Mm. Listen, God is speaking into your life and my life right now. He's telling us that you got to trust me even when you can't trace me. I'll let you know. When it's time for you to deviate or move in a different direction, go up or down, I, I'll let you know. When it's time for you to climb or when it's time for you to dip, I, I'll let you know. Uh, what, what I want to know from you is, are you willing to trust me? When you can't see the image underneath the translucent paper, God may not give us the blueprint or the roadmap. God may not give us the image underneath the paper. Yes, yes ahead of time. But uh, my brothers and sisters, we must trust him. Nonetheless, even when we can't trace him. Listen, he says, there's one more thing I want to share with you on my way to heaven. He, he, he lets Abraham know that if you would trust me when you can't see the road map or the blueprints he says I'm going to do something great in your life God is speaking to you this morning he says that's something I want to do in you and with you and through you but you have to learn how to trust me 
when you can't trace it. Look at verse 2. He says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God promised to use the life of Abraham to do great things. And yet here as he continues to trust God and move in the direction that God called because he did get up and go. You know that, right? Yes, uh, he, he did get up and follow the voice of God. He did get up and move in the direction God said move. But while he is following God, God would bless, tell him that I'm going to bless your life. Yes, uh, and I'm going to make your seed as the, the sand on the seashore. Yes, but if his seed is to be multiplied and to be great, he has to start with at least one. And here it is that Abraham is 75 and no children of his own. Yes, God is still calling on him to trust him, even when he can't trace him. What are your ifs? What are your buts in life? Yes, uh, you're saying, I, I, Lord, I will trust you, but I, I can't see you. Lord, I will trust you. Yes, but I don't know which way to turn. Lord, I will trust you. Yes, uh, but I need some training wheels on my bicycle. Lord, I will trust you, but you've got to give me an image uh, underneath my translucent face. Lord, I will trust you. And God says, uh-huh. Yes, if you want to get where I'm trying to take you, you've got to trust me when you can't trace me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's 75 and he has uh, no offspring. Uh, yes, in order to fulfill what God is telling him he's going to do in his life. What is God intending to do with us? And we're saying, but I don't have this. Lord, I will trust you, but I don't have that. Lord, Lord I will trust you, but I can't do this or that. Yes. Uh, what, what roadblocks are we placing in front of ourselves? Uh, yes, to block our own progress. Uh, yes, while God is trying to lead us. Uh, yes, we're throwing stuff in our own way. I want to share with you today, even though it may not look like what you think it ought to look like, God will take care of you. Somebody ought to remember that song we sang, uh, yes, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you ought to trust that. Yes, yes. yes you ought to know that God, uh, yes, uh, will see you through. God will bless you. Yes, God will lead you. God will provide for you. Uh, he'll make a way out of no way. Uh, yes, when your back is pressed up against the wall, uh, he'll be there to fight for you. Uh, yes, all you have to do is trust him. God will. Take care of you through every day, all the way. Yes, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, we just got to trust him. Uh, that fourth verse says, Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. Yes, uh, how, how many of us, uh, yes, are, are willing to hear the voice of God uh, and, and we are willing to trust God, uh, trust the voice of God, uh, trust the hand of God, the might of God? How many of us are willing to just simply take God at his word? Where you lead, Lord, I'll follow. Yes, I've seen you do it in days gone by, and, and so I'm going to follow you, Lord. Yes, Lord. yes I, I, I saw how you were able to take 
a man beyond his years, uh, yes, a woman beyond her years, uh, yes, uh, and still give them, uh, yes, uh, an abundance of children, uh, yes, and we stand here today on the shoulders of Abraham. Yes, yes uh, we would sing a little song when we were growing up, Father Abraham, yes, had many sons. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, what I'm getting at here today as I get ready to sit down now, yes, is that God delivered on his promise uh, because Abraham was willing to trust him even when he could not trace him. And my brothers and sisters, if you'll do the same, yes, uh, if you'll venture out, uh, yes, if you'll stand on the shoulders uh, of our big brother Jesus the Christ, Yes, I, I want you to understand that, that God can take you to where you need to be. You just keep on trusting and believing in his word. And God will take you the rest of the way. Yes, truth of the matter is, where you are right now, he brought you. What you know. He's taught you. Yes, and wherever you're going is because he will take you. So the doors of the church are open. I want to invite you right where you are to receive the promises and blessings of God in your life. I know it's kind of difficult when you can't see what's underneath the paper. But if you would trust him, It'll be all right. So as we stand on our feet, doors of the church are open, and I want to invite you into his presence right now. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to invite him in right where you are. I have to follow Jesus. accepted you as Lord and Savior of their lives, Lord, that you would allow them to trust you right where they are. Those, Lord, who have accepted you into their lives, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, that they would trust you even more when the training wheels are off, when the blueprint is taking, taken away, when the road map is closed, Lord, that they would continue to trust you all the way from earth to glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank God for this, another Lord's day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. amen. It's another day, and I'm glad about it. Yes. Amen. amen. As God prepared us, and we prepare to go down from this place, yes, Lord. but never out of his presence, yes, Lord. let us take a moment. Amen. To think on the goodness of God. Thank you, Jesus. All that he's done for you and for me. Amen. And let us just consider praying for someone else other than ourselves. And as you pray for somebody else, there's somebody who will be praying for you. Amen. Lord, how we thank you today as we pray one for another. Lord, let your mercy and grace be rich in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would fulfill every promise and purpose that you have for us. We know, Lord, that what you have for us, it's for us. 
And Lord, we just pray now as we leave out of this place, but never out of your presence, Lord, that you would continue to go with us and stand by us. Hold us up with your mighty right hand, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would just continue to keep us safe, heal our bodies. Lord, we pray that you would stand us up firm on a solid rock, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say in song. Amen. Amen.